Good morning, friends. Good evening. Actually, you know what? I'm recording this um, on Friday morning, and since it's the weekend, and since it's just the answers to the comprehension questions, I think I'm actually going to just go ahead and post this as soon as I'm done. Um, this time, we are going over the Mighty Miss Malone chapters. Hopefully, I've got this right. I have marked down that we read 17 through 24 this week. Um, so if I am <laughs> covering chapter 17 and we've already gone over the answers for that, I apologize. Just bear with me. <clears throat> you know what? Chapter 17 answers do look familiar. Let me just go ahead through them just in case really quick. Um, and again, if I'm repeating myself, I sor I'm sorry. Uh, for chapter 17, question 1, the answer was B. Question 2, the answer was C. Question 3, A. Question 4, false. Question 5, B. Question 6, C. Question 7, D. Question 8, A. Uh, for number 9, as long as you have something along these lines and it's a complete sentence, you are good to go. The answer is no, she does not always follow her word. Number 10, Jimmy stole paper and a pen so that Desa could write a new recommendation letter for Mama, copying Mrs. Cardsteel's handwriting. So something along those lines again, as long as you have complete sentences. All right, I know for a fact that we read chapters 18 through 19 this week. Let me just go ahead and find the questions once again. So that I can read the questions and read you the answers simultaneously. All right, for chapters 18 and 19, number one, what were the Malones going to use to move their belongings? The answer is B, their arms. Number two, why wasn't the furniture coming with the Malones when they moved? The answer is C, it wasn't theirs, it was rented. Number three, why would Mother mark a half an inch taller on the wardrobe for Jimmy? Why would she do that? Answer is A, he wasn't growing and it made him feel better. Number four, what happened when Desa knocked on Mrs. Needham's door? Unfortunately, the answer was A, nobody answered. And then number five, where was Clarice when Desa went to say goodbye? Answer is C, Nashville. She was there with her brother and father, I believe. Um, definitely her father, definitely a sibling um, for work. Number six, what note did Desa leave Clarice? Answer is A, a picture that Jimmy drew, and she actually really liked that picture that he drew. Number seven, why couldn't Mr. Rhymes give the Malones a ride? <clears throat> the answer to number seven is... B, his car was taken away by the bank. Number eight, why did the landlord kick the Malones out early? Answer is A, he had people who would pay more to live there. And then number nine, who did Jimmy get to help out? Answer to that is C, Marvin Ware. I think his nickname was the numbers man or the numbers guy. Number 10, last question for these two chapters. What city are the Malones going to stay in? The answer is B, Chicago. Chicago. All right. Chapters 20 and 21. Number one, why was Desa impressed with her temporary room? Answer is B. It was more beautiful than any other room she'd ever been in. Number two, how does Jimmy explain to Mama his friendship with Marvin? A. Marvin liked his singing and they became friends. Number three, either circle or write the correct answer. True or false, Jimmy always ran numbers for Marvin. According to Jimmy, this statement is false. He never ran numbers. Not even one time, according to Jimmy, for Marvin. Number four. Who were Desa and Jimmy talking to about leaving Chicago? Answer is C. Epi and Miss Carter. Number five. What does writing the 
again, it says writing the links. I thought it was supposed to be writing the rails because I don't remember reading that saying in the book. I thought it was writing the rails. Either way, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the answer to number five is A, hopping on a train. Number six, what did Deza leave behind? This was so sad. C, she left her box of clothes, including that beautiful dress, that beautiful gingham dress from uh, Miss Needham. Number seven, how is Deza feeling at the end of this chapter? As long as you have evidence to support your answer and your answer includes a feeling word, an emotion word, then good to go. Complete sentence. Number eight, where was the train going to take them? The train was going to take them to A, Detroit. Detroit. Number nine, why do you think Miss Carter warns Mama about the camps? What advice does she give Mama? So two questions there. Inferencing, using context clues from the story to, to find this answer. You have something along these lines and it's in a complete sentence and you have good um, evidence to support your answer. My answer was because she liked Mama and does not want anything to happen to the Malone family, her advice is not to tell people their real names, where they are from, and not to let them know Father is not with them. They should pretend Father is out running errands for them and that he will be back soon. That was the advice. Number 10, how long is the walk to Flint? B, a half hour. 11, what do you think is going to happen in the next chapter? This, similarly with number 12, do you think the Malones will find the father, why or why not? As long as you have a complete sentence, your answer makes sense and has your opinion, and you can support your answer with evidence, good to go. Lots of varying answers for uh, these chapters. Okay. On to chapter 22. All right. Number one, what is the Malone sign for stop talking and start listening? This is cute. Answer is B, tugging on the ear, like, hey, shh, quiet. Number two, why do you think Stu has patience for everyone in the camp? You might have different answers for this. This is a, an opinion. Just have um, a complete sentence and support your answer with evidence. You could say, she feels responsible for them because, or she um, wants to help out because, or she cares about these people. I can tell because she does this, this, and this. Number three, did Mama find Grandmother and Papa in Flint? Mm. No is the answer. And it's okay if you don't have a complete sentence. If you just say no or no period, that's fine. What was Mama's good news? Number four. Answer is A. She could work cleaning offices. Five. What nickname did Deza receive at the camp? This was cute too. Answer is C. Little Stu. She was Stu's little helper. Number six. What was the difference between Flint schools and Gary schools? As long as you have, again, evidence to support your answer, and it's something along these lines. These were the important notes that um, the author made sure to point out in the story. <clears throat> Gary schools were all African-American students, and there wasn't much racism. Everyone got a chance to receive good grades. Flint schools had mixed races, and the African-American students were treated differently. They were not graded on their work, but by the color of their skin. So something along those lines. Your answer might be, not be quite that profound or worded that way, but that's basically what... Um, he was describing in the story. Number seven. Question was, what grade did Deza receive on her English essay in Flint? The answer was C. She got a C plus, which was apparently a really good grade for that teacher to give to an African American student. Just crazy. It's really crazy how far our country has come and how much further we have to go. Number eight, why did Loretta tell Deza? 
she must be real smart for getting a C plus. As long as you have something along these lines and it's in a complete sentence, that's a better grade than any African American student has received, including, ooh, there was another student. We just were introduced to her in the last chapter. Hmm. I don't remember her name. I'm sure that you guys do though. You have a good memory. Mrs. Keller has a bad memory. I'm old. I don't remember her name, but it's Desa's new friend at the camp. Um, evidently she is known for getting the best grades and her best grades that she's received at RC. All right, anyways, moving on. Number nine, what did Desa do to the little boy while he puckered up for a kiss? This was sweet. Answer was A, he kissed him. She kissed him three times on the forehead, just like her family does. And then number 10, you not only have to tell me do you think the whether you think the Malones will ever find Papa, but you also have to tell me why or why not. I'm also noticing that the person who made these quizzes um, put unnecessary apostrophes in the Malones. So that's kind of frustrating. Sorry for the incorrect grammar. Um so, you can have something along the lines of, yes, I think they will find him because blah, 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 or no, I do not think they will find him because blah, 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 blah. Just support your answer and have a complete sentence. Finally, these were some long chapters this week, but you know what? We are almost done. I said it uh, last night. I think that we might actually be able to finish this book, if not next week, early the week after which is awesome because we have another exciting book for economics that's quite shorter called um, Lily and Miss Liberty. And I think you guys will really enjoy that for economics and government. Anyway, I'm always getting distracted, sorry. Chapters 23 and 24. Number one, what happened after Jimmy finished singing and opened the knock on the door? Ooh, he did find my answers to these. The answer was A. Some men said they wanted to talk to Des about her voice because they didn't realize it was Jimmy that sang. Number two, how old did Jimmy tell the musician that he was? He said he was C-17. How old was he really? Okay. Number three, Mama tells, there's another apostrophe. That really bothers me. I don't like that. I wish I could take that out. I'm sorry. Mama tells Deza. Her first word as a baby was, the answer is C, Y. I thought that was perfect for Desa. She's a questioner. She's a someone I would see asking why. Number four, why do you think Mama was telling Desa how special she was and about the first time her family heard her talk? Your answers are going to vary. You could say to distract her from how, um, you know, blue the situation that they were in looked, um, maybe making her feel appreciated and loved, maybe she thought she was missing paw, just make sure that you are using complete sentences and give me what you think. Number five, where did Jimmy go? Jimmy went to work with Mr. Z A. All right, last five questions. Number six, how is Deza going to remember Jimmy? Um, she said something, she wrote a really long statement about how she would remember him. Basically, this is what she said. She will remember the last night she had with him when he explained that it was the best night of his life. The way he looked so proud when he was singing and people noticed. Those were the big things that she was going to remember. Number seven, what made Deza run back to the camp? This is scary. D, she heard gunshots. Scary, scary. Number eight, what do you think is going to happen next? Um, for this one, as well as number 10, this computer is always doing that to me, sorry. Um, for number eight, what do you think is going to happen next? And 10, what, what character traits do you notice about Dessa just in this chapter? Those answers are also going to vary. Just make sure you have complete sentences, okay? Um, and it makes sense for the story. Number nine, what is the setting of this chapter? The setting is just simply the camp or the uh, Flint camp, if you wanted to be specific there. And that wraps it up for our questions for this week.
we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chapters left, it looks like. But there are, again, going to be times where we read maybe two or three chapters each day. So that's what I'm saying. We might be able to get this done next week. I wonder what's going to happen. We have, we're have we missing so many characters. There's so many, you know, questions that I have, and I'm sure that you have as well. Um, so thanks for sticking it out with me. I hope you've been enjoying this book. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and Mrs. Keller loves you, and I miss you so much, and I cannot wait to see you on this morning Zoom. And I hope technology works with us this week, and we're able to successfully do our virtual field trip. I have all kinds of camo on, camouflage. I have all kinds of animal prints that I'm going to wear to look wild for our field trip. So I hope you join us. And if you can't, watch the video on YouTube and check out the virtual field trip uh, slides in Google Classroom. All right. Bye.